one on behalf of the team calcutta comparatist 1919 i take this privilege to warmly welcome you to the eighth session of a webinar series calcutta comparatist 1919 is an independent forum for research scholars of humanities and social sciences it carries the legacy of academic space for literary comparison between indian languages initiated in 1990 it is a platform for sharing research interests and ideas we are organizing online lectures on various interdisciplinary topics to be delivered by academicians and distinguished research scholars of different fields thank you for joining us today now i would like to request our host jemima nasrin to take over the mic jemima thank you suparna and i welcome you all again to this uh, eighth session of this webinar series today we have with us dr gautam korbokar Dr. Gautam Karbhokar is an assistant professor of English at Bara Bazar Bikram Chitu Memorial College, Sidho Kanu Birsa University, West Bengal, India. He has completed his PhD from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, National Insti Institute of Technology, Durgapur, West Bengal, India. His essays, research papers, book reviews, and poems have been published in main, mainly reputed international journals. He has taken interviews of many notable Indian poets writing in English. He has edited three critical books on Indian poetry in English and two books on South Asian literature, culture, and society, namely South Asian literature, culture, and society: a critical review nation in 2020, and South Asian literature, culture, and society: an interpretative exegesis in 2019. His edited anthology on Indian poetry in English has come out from Shahidya Academy, New Delhi, in 2020. His six interests in Indian writings in English, South Asian literature, film studies, science fiction, eco-critical studies, Dalit literature, cultural studies, trauma, and memory studies. Today, he will be talking about tradition, skepticism, and modernity, the poetry of Arun Kolatkar. Now, uh, Dr. Uh, Gautam Karmakar, you may please begin your lecture. Thank you. Jayima, the problem is that there is a sudden power cut. Mm, All right. So it All seems right. like that a uh, host is speaking numb. So we am um, little bit good if I just uh, please, oh, we, it's there. It's there. Can... No, 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 it's there. It's there. All mm. right. Then we can begin now. Yes. Yes. So. Uh, Oh. The virtual stage is yours now. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, so, uh, very good evening to all of you on this virtual platform, and at the same time, I want to thank uh, thank the organizers and the whole team of Calcutta Companies uh, working behind this virtual platform for putting together this wonderful lecture series. Um, thanks for the warm invitation, and at the same time, thanks. for introducing me with your students scholars and other academicians on the other side of this virtual platform so the need for for organizing this kind of lectures is in this severely uh, testing time this space worthy and a timely one too as we need to be a bit more rational logical and secular to some extent and especially i would like to thank jemima for approaching me and thinking me capable enough um, to talk on this issue and i am extremely happy to see scholars are coming forward to organize this kind of lecture series in a very well structured way so today i'm going to talk uh, talk about certain elements of um, that we come across uh, through um, the notion of skepticism uh, modernism and tradition in the poetry of arun kolatkar so let me tell you that post modern indian english poetry to some extent is the result of many experiences experiments also a new themes techniques and personal experiences are there at the same time irony maximalism pastiche and above all uh, the rejection of romantic and melodious style and rhythm so many poets like jayant mahapatra ak ramanujan komala das shikla kumar j patel and arun kolkar um, try to keep up their uh, the kind of tradition of postmodernism in their poetry so 
why i'm telling it so uh, let me tell you that with 1953 and uh, 1952 with nizam ezekiel a time to change and the friendship between um, nizam ezekiel and pilal and the beginning of the writing writers workshop to some extent paved the way for that kind of journey a journey towards a new beginning and that is why nizam ezekiel is also told the father of modern indian poetry in english but am all of them to some extent i think orun kolatkar is somehow different his poetry is free free from any kind of imitation uh, any kind of anti poetic elements are not there in his poetry and his irony is experimental is sardonic is unconventional and realistic in nature then the so called indian society religion rituals do not influence him as he is more interested in realism modernism society and the local people so he is a very simple down to earth poet and often we find in his poetry a certain kind of dualism and at the same time conflict so what kind of conflict is the conflict between tradition and modernism tradition and skeptic attitude modernism and at the same time rationalism and at the same time superstition between realism and superstition as he always want to search the truth behind all this so why i have taken this particular poet and his one particular section jejuri that it is one of the best known books that i have ever come across till now where you can see the glimpses of india the glimpses of regionalism religion secularism from secularism to the concept of post secularism and this is the poem with this haunting 31 poems it pertains to a visit to a certain kind of religious place it means the narrator monohar is going uh, to visit one particular play, uh, place called jejuri and it is in maharashtra jejuri is situated approximately 50 kilometers away from pune and it is a small town where the temple jejuri is situated and uh, this temple lies in the uh, southeast uh, part of pune and there is khandova temple this khandova temple is one of the uh, most revered temples uh, in maharashtra state and it is there known as um, khandovachi or the jejuri and the temple is dedicated to khandova also known as uh, malhari martand and this khandova is an incarnation of lord shiva and it is uh, to some extent um, uh, it is regarded as god of jejuri who is held in a great reference by jhangars as one of the old tribes so to some extent this kind of attitude this kind of tension throughout the whole poem is very much presented and it's a study it's a study about uh, dilemma it's a study about quest so polakkar is basically a very simple social and truthful and skeptic poet of indian english poetry and contributes a lot for the development of this genre and a close reading of his this famous poetry collection jejuri somehow um, reminds me and remind and and if you all come across the, the 31 poems it can remind uh, what p s eliot uh, has shown in his westland it's a kind of spiritual detailio uh, relation is shown in his uh, poetry and he somehow investigate the religion and religious people to achieve the actual truth of intellectual life intellectual value and he shows he shows the past and present the religious tradition of india in his poetry so in jejuri we find this 31 poem to 31 sections which describes his visit to jejuri which is a famous temple that i have already told you uh, in near uh, maharashtra and the and the most penultimate section between jejuri and the railway station present some kind of experience um, which provides a sharp contrast and the poet is generally skeptical and ironic and through moments of um, sympathy uh, as in uh, encounters with an old beggar there uh, and um, a teenage wife so the po the poem all the poems here to some extent draw our attention attention from the traditional mode of thinking of some kind of pre uh, religion and its sanctity and 
to some extent how we should approach how we should think our own definition of god so in jejuri we can find that it's so it's a poem and my whole talk will be about it's a poem about the quest and the dilemma the quest for the the quest can be symbolized as it's a part of modernism and the dilemma is there whether i will um, belong myself to that old traditional genre or not so throughout the whole section if we come across we can see that um, the value system and the quest and the investigation uh, somehow leads the narrator to see the urban social reality find there suppose for example um, in the very first poem the poem the whole section begins with the very first poem the bus when the narrator begins his journey towards the temple in a bus and it is a journey for all of us it's a journey for the readers also here we can find the the oscillation between tradition and modernity and the old man in the poem in that he is also the co-passenger of the narrator in the bus is the representative of the blind religious um, um, indian tradition and on the other hand the narrator is a modern man the narrator the poet persona and he he finds something special behind the blind fate of the old man and at the same time the foolish attitude of the fellow passengers actually he belongs from an educated family and he is brought up um, in an urban area makes him realistic and that is why he, uh, he uh, keeps on asking and he is skeptical always and he uh, doesn't want to believe anything without real lo logic and not only that but the narrator um, uh, of the other self of the poet also carries some kind of religiousness and faith which are not very easy to um, to, to shrug off so the poem yeah, if i tell you the poem something uh, the poem begins with let me quote from it the poem begins with that uh, your own divided your own divided face in a pair of glasses on an old man's nose He, uh, is all the countryside uh, you got to see so it's a kind of dilemma and it's a kind of oscillation that is seems very much puzzled he is totally conscious about this dilemma and he wants to break all his cultural baggage and at the same time his cultural tradition actually he wants to get the experience all this from a neutral aloof condition but his alienation from from superstition and blind faith on on religion certainly give birth to skepticism and a quest for ultimate truth and that is why at the end of the journey while he is telling uh, let me read a few lines at the end of a bumpy ride with your own face uh, on either side when you get up the bus you don't step inside the old man's head so actually through this poetry collection one can find that the dilemma conflict and the tradition and the and the tension between tradition and modernization between modern and orthodox ideas and when you are trying to get up from the bus you don't step inside the old man's that the old it means already you are in that kind of juncture and that is why the old man face and the old man brain and his own thinking somehow certainly engulfs the narrator within the parameter where he needs to ask himself that whether i need to be skeptic in nature i need um, i need to be traditional in nature or my educational background my rational thinking uh, my logical uh, bent of mind urges me to think all the things in a different way then there is another poems uh, there are choitanna poems in in the second choitanna poem you can see one can clearly see the, the contrast between the faith which is shown by the devotional man and the ruined commercialist tourist complex it is shown that the first person's belief and myth regarding the stone at jejuri it means those stones the poet is telling that in choitanna poems that the stones found in that place it is sweet as grapes at the stones of jejuri said choitanna he pops a stone in his mouth and speaks gods it means he is creating gods so you know this kind of situation this kind of thing often urges us 
to think something beyond our idea and beyond our notion if now i'm uh, telling you a bit from the uh, cultural and from the point of view of a media if you are all coming across to the um, uh, comic series or the superhero series the boys that is premiered on amazon and you will find every new episode um, on friday you will come to see that superheroes are not the chosen ones superheroes are created superheroes are their bodies are formulated by injecting a one particular serum that is called compound v and those superheroes are nothing but the product of cultural capitalism they are the scripted superhero whatever they are doing the camera is rolling every now and then every, and they are their whole actions are recorded whatever they are doing uh, and there there is one particular character his name is homelander he is some kind of some kind of a mixture of uh, superman and at the same time mixture of um, of captain america so you can see the potential key of uh, the same to homelander and there and while some people are uh, believing that yes these are the chosen ones these are the gods actually there are seven superheroes um, for the season 1 is showing the seven super the seven superheroes are not the chosen ones they are not the children of god but they are the normal children and from their very birth they have been under the treatment and to some extent um, um, under the impact of compound v they have grown into a some kind of superhero with superhuman abilities and then there is another figure like the poet he is billy butcher he is there to to kill all those superheroes being a normal man with normal human abilities is trying to kill all the all the superheroes and he and he tries to make people um, think that these are the superheroes they are the notorious ones and they are working they are the uh, bonded superheroes they are the paid superheroes the superheroes has pension even so so at the same time this kind of situation is there in jejuri people are they are telling that 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 when uh, the victor no is pop the stone um, and spat out gods it's nothing like that people from that that particular place they are believe, they are believing like that but the poet is not believing so there is the conflict there is the oscillation between dilemma between the choice between tradition between modernity and but again um, his search for truth regarding the god and stone beings and he feels that man is more concerned for stone rather than religion and god and his skeptic mind and his realistic thought are the are the barriers because he is a modern man uh, with modern and logical bent of mind in there is another problem in his scratch he again shows his dilemma and quest for the truth he wants to investigate the stone and go and that is why he is telling that um, that what is god and what is stone and the what are the dividing lines in jejuri every other stone is the god or his cousin see the irony in jejuri every other stone is god or his cousin so that in the particular base people are thinking like that but not the poet and actually it is quite tough to identify between the god and stone at the jury and the dividing lines are not so prominent as as a stone can produce a legend and here comes as a part of a huge rock then the poet come across a, uh, a, a kind of huge rock and uh, and uh, what he hears about the rock is that this is the part of the rock that is actually the wife of uh, khandova uh, and uh, and uh, this wife is turned into a rock um, by um, by the heat she receives from khandova showed in a fit of anger see the story see the fabricated story behind this stone so and the crack there is a crack in that rock and, and the crack in that rock is that particular wound so he saw that that, that uh, how a particular rock is turned into a legend by fabricating a story 
so the poet is a modern man with modern and realistic outlook will never take religion and different religious belief and and legend and stone in the simple way he will question about its authenticity and thus is shown in the every poem and his dilemma and his conflict that um, some kind of tradition and some kind of modernism skepticism and and the religious belief even if even if he is shut down all his modern thoughts and and whatever efforts he takes to move away from the religious surrounding he, he can only be able to uh, to slide a little bit uh, you know um, a, a little bit from that kind of previous condition so this is the problem he is facing and to some extent there is another poem Uh, that is makaran uh, where the protagonist uh, manohar disobeys the um, uh, customs and remains free in his own thought the speaker here prefers to um, prefers to smoke rather than worshiping a statue in the name of god so tradition and modernity are shown and his quest for actual god is also shown here is throws question towards the authenticity and a relevance of customs and rituals in a temple and that is why he is not there to take his shirt off and to go to that uh, uh, temple in the poem makaran that is showing to in the temple to do puja he way he just want to stay uh, outside the temple and he uh, and he is asking from his um, fellow people uh, uh people who are there uh, to offer their prayers that he is asking for match box because he wants to lead a secret this is the outlook of the poet so the poet is a kind of person who is skeptic and at the same time who will investigate mind as his quest for the actual religious aspect haunts him in his another poem the priest son he asks a teenage boy uh, Christian means the son of the priest, uh, a teenage boy of the priest, about the authenticity of the story that that priest son is telling. In the in that particular poem, the priest son uh, takes the narrator to to different places. Uh, it's like uh, whenever you go to the temple, see, India is a land. Uh, uh, there is a story. There is a story that I want to tell you. It's a kind of. Um, it's a kind of story about uh, how people are thinking us last time when i was in europe and uh, and when i was in slovenia and so two three professors there tell me that okay gautam you are from that place of snake and charmers and where the so many temples are there and 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 um, um what are the things that there people are still believing a uh, monkey is uh, uh, as something lord hanuman or something else so you know that we are famous for the particular kind of outs mind and the west is also to some extent thinking that whatever we are seeing uh, and if anyone is telling it in the name of god we are supposed to believe that and and that is the problem with us we are not questioning ourselves that whether uh, we, we should uh, ask about the authenticity of that place or not so it is not the place of uh, <laughs> it's not the place about that snake and ch snake charmers it's not the place about whether whatever lc will uh, consider it as god this is the case this is the case that the poet is also trying to convey that yes whenever we are thinking we should shouldn't think in this particular way and that is why when the priest sir when the priest sir is telling that um, Mm, um, there is fabricated story that he is telling that that there is a god he has 13 or 14 hands and when the when people is, when the poet is telling why he uh, or she has 13 hands why she the doesn't have 15 hands the priest son is unable to answer the question because the priest son is supposed to tell that scripted story that his father ha has told him to do that is the problem the priest and this kind of religious gurus if we come across the poems of of rizem ezekiel he to some extent fiercely criticized those those religious gurus though, who are manipulating us and and the priest is is also telling some kind of story he says that uh, 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 
showing the hills over that particular place um, and that, that the hills are demons and also tells each hill has a particular story it means each hill or each demon has a particular story and after after hearing the stories of the hills and the demons and the rocks the the narrator uh, feels a kind of conflict and dilemma as whether to believe in that story or not and out of skepticism his quest begins and and he asks the priest son about his thought and authentic authenticity regarding the story so when the priest son was asked that whether he is believing it or not the priest son feels the same thing like the narrator and he wants to divert the narrator's mind uh, by by showing him a beautiful butterfly it means the priest's priest son um, to some extent in his conscious mind knows that these are the fake stories but i have to present them in such such a such a kind of way that the narrators or all the other um uh, people uh, who were there they're supposed to believe in that story but the priest son he himself doesn't believe in that kind of story so this is a kind of uh, irony that is present in the poem and throughout the whole volume then there is another point there is an old woman and there so his dilemma again their dilemma and the quest for truth and the and the reality to go side by side here um, here one can find that the, the different attitudes of the people towards the old women who begs money from the visitors some pious uh, pilgrims uh, give her money as um, they also take it as a pious good deed but it is not the same case for all like the protagonist he comes there to visit the place and and the sir and the search uh, and he is there to search its authenticity and to know the past and present about the legend and the myth so he doesn't want to give the women any kind of money but the persistent women offers the protagonist um, some places to visit and but the protagonist uh, has uh, seen the place before and the, and the and the rejection from his part to give money gives a kind of queer feeling to the protagonist again he feels the same kind of conflict and and, and you can see that uh, to some extent whenever there is some kind of beggar or someone is asking for money uh, so we need to think we need to think that yes yes i should do this kind of noble deed yeah to some extent god is there god is seeing us and he will definitely do good to us and whenever we are not there um, to help or to ask someone that, uh, that it's the time for each and every day we can see that so many people with their a uh, fake kind of disease that my father is suffering from it that my my mother is suffering from that and they are asking for money if you were there to 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 uh, question themselves about the authenticity of that kind of disease then the look on their face it will tell that they are totally disgusted they are totally feel irritated and they are not in a position to answer your question they are only there to make you feel sympathetic towards them they are trying to manipulate you this is the problem so it's a true fact that the poet keeps all his confusion dilemmas and investigation investigation within himself and he doesn't interfere in other suffering and and religious belief this is a modern man and his modern outlook is shown here quest for authenticity is needed in this post modern period i think and 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 as logic defines everything now even in his return there arises some kind of confusion a dilemma and there are all the results from the difference and quest between the uh, between the traditional belief and a uh, kind of modern outlook um, uh, that is there and that is why uh, the last part of the section where there is a poem uh, it is between jejuri and the railway station one can find the returning motifs and there are the narrator stops between jejuri and the railway station for some reason this is the turning point this is the turning point and this particular poem creates a kind of space a kind of space where uh, that kind of modernism and that kind of traditional elements uh, come to meet uh, and when it, uh, this kind of melting point to some extent um, for for kolatkar it's a kind of the end of history no i'm not talking about the fukuyama's end of history in this term about the end of history of jejuri so kind of 
deconstructive reading can show that the station is the representative of the modern world and the temple plays Jejuri as the traditional world. And it seems to us that perhaps the poet tries to achieve a kind, some kind of balance or, a, or a, he rather helps to maintain the divided will and dilemma uh, in the middle person as it takes both the world in a similar way with nothing more to believe and nothing more to disbelieve and the willing suspension of disbelief to some extent. But it is also true that he is suffering the problem of dilemma and quest till the end of his journey. So many questions um, come to his mind and he is trying to solve those, but those are too tough for him because he makes a balance between those thoughts and confusing elements. So, uh, so he, he is trying to, uh, uh, so in that particular poem, let me read three lines that uh, when he is telling that, uh, wait a bit. Hmm. Am I audible and visible to all? Yes. Am I, am I audible and visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I see. Shorvani is there. Huh. So uh, let me read those four lines that that um, you have left the town behind with a kind of coconut in your hand and a priest is visiting you so you can see that, that, that there and a few questions knocking about your head so this will be the questions that will be forever with him and it seems that he has achieved some sort of truth and balance in his conflict and dilemmas he is not stuck in the station out of uh, dialectic dilemma between modernity and tradition but due to the nature and natural elements that is surrounding so we can see that from the very beginning it's a place it's a place uh, where um, he is trying to ask himself so many questions it's a place where he is trying to make a kind of sociological study so this is a kind of problem that he's suffering. If I can tell you, there is another poem that his name is um, The Priest. Uh, he also shows that the society culture that is related to worship. It is the society that is full of money-minded people. And the priest is a no more exception. The priest waits for the arrival of the bus as the pilgrims are the source of his income. If you go through any of the temples in India, you can see that so many pandas are there and the pandas are nothing but the money-minded people to some extent they are trying to exploit it and we are too religious to ask about the authenticity about those pandas and the things they are telling to some extent like you you have to give uh, at the kind of 51 rupees or 101 rupees or 501 rupees this is the thing you should do so and we the pilgrims are the source of their income in that point the priest is more concerned about the timetable of the bus it means the bus are like the victims the, all the bus and all the passengers are the victims they are coming they are coming to get exploited to get manipulated to get subjugated by the religious doctrines of those priests so he is and uh, and he is not there uh, to offer puja to deity uh, because this is the secondary work skolapkar here aptly shows that how the society is corrupted by this so called hypocritical priest and he often comes out from the temple to see whether the bus arrives or not he also says something like uh, a mantra with a Puran Poli in his plate as he is praying for the bus and his passengers. Uh, and, and at the same time, he, it may be also true that, that his, his utterance of some kind of mantra will be a, some kind of policy to attract the pilgrims um, as so many, so many other hypocrites priests are, are available there. So it means that, that I am a bit more religious in nature. I am a bit more concerned about this temple, about this particular God. So, there is a competition among the priests. So many priests are there. Who will catch him? So you have to prove yourself the best one, uh, one among the Lord. So see the competition is also there among those priests. And so this is the pitch. Those are the priests. They are offering some kind of heel and hunch on and and uh, and a little plate that the priest on there uh, and and they are asking 
that when the bus will come and when I will try to exploit all those. So the poet here shows how the caretaker and the worshipper of God is changed into a greedy person. The pilgrims are more religious and devout than the priest, and this is the irony. He takes this as his service and the offering from, from pilgrims um, as his only salary. And everything is shown here in a very commercial way. And um, commercialization is in everywhere in our society. That, that is the fact. And that is why I have told you that gods in the boys, they are also man-made gods. And they are the man-made gods, they are salaried gods. They are salaried superheroes. Uh, and, and the temples are surrounded by beggars, greedy and the hungry people and the priest is there as the representative figure to those people. Here the poet compares him with an animal to show his hunger and the condition of the society. And to some extent, I'm, today I'm not telling you because my today's talk is solely on the thematic parameter of Jejudi, else otherwise this is a very particular pertinent section where a kind of existential reading is very much possible and where a kind of reading it's a kind of it's a kind of place where the death of god occurs and if we are talking about the death of god so we have to think about Nietzsche's concept of superman or ubermesh that kulatkar is also trying to show here, the poet Makar and this kind of Ubermesh is trying to show the other people that yes, there is nothing like it. I am there, a bit I am with a more kind of rational mindset. Uh, and if you want to know the concept of, uh, of Ubermesh, you have to go through the aspect Jorathistra and the K science to some extent. And at the same time, this whole category, this whole premise of Jejudi can talk about three value system. And when we are talking about uh, if from an existential point of view or what I can say if uh, if um, my today's uh, talk is something about a kind of sociological study so it, it, it will be a related something about um, Durkheim and his concept of sacred and, and profane so the profane is somehow the priest and the sacred we are the sacred ones the god to some extent are the sacred ones and that is why in a particular poem in this whole um, volume there is a temple and it is a temple that is um, forsaken by the god Sivan and the bitch is there with her puppies there they are residing in that particular te temple so in that particular temple god is replaced by bitch and her puppies and so the poet is telling that even gods have for second this particular temple and now non-human entities like animals become the god see the cons see this can be the notion for a whole lot of discussion so this is a kind of poem and it's a poem that so many things can be done out of it then in that particular poem there is another poem uh, it's not possible to um, explore all the 31 poems. So I'm just uh, trying to give you a kind of glimpse so that you can read and later um, can deconstruct it from a numerous perspective. So in the, this another poem that is named as An Old Woman. It shows the society and surrounding the place of Khandava temple at Jejudi. And here the old man tries to earn something for, uh, from the pilgrim. So, so he wants only 50 paisa and if anybody shows disinterest in giving the paisa then the old man and then the old women shows her some places like hot so shrine and she also takes the help of religion and takes the opportunity to use the pilgrims blind faith and the woman is also very eager to earn and he doesn't want to leave the pilgrims really this is the picture of the society and the social surrounding we are living and the, po the poet portrays this in a very beautiful way it is such a society that if anybody fails to do something and it is such a so society that um, if if anybody fails to offer a puja to god somehow it haunts him and that the and the pilgrims inability or the disinterest in giving 50 paisa to the old uh, women haunts at such extent that he feels like a very minor person that the uh, with the uh, um he fails to give that work and so this is the society about the commercialization, about the money-minded people, and about the inability to cope up with this that can make one alienated. And you can see that whenever so many other temples, uh, last year I visited Tirupati temple, 
um not talking about the perspective from a theist or a or a, an atheist but i'm telling that there in the temple tirupati tirumala temple at at oruna at andhra pradesh it is the most pious most reputed temples in india and so many people are there so many beggars are there outside the temple and they are also <coughs> trying to exploit money from the pilgrims and even i along with my mom and dad they are um, sat for almost uh, 13 14 hours to offer puja and to get those laddus which cost 35 rupees each it's a kind of blood too that if I take uh, some kind of, um, I'm not talking about the authenticity of those kind of belief that I am, I am telling that even when I'm seeing that there is a place where that, that is exploiting people, a single blood of 35 rupees. If anyone um, joining in this platform have gone through that place, they will also uh, feel that same kind of experience that to some extent these are the temples that are gaining a lot that are earning a lot and we are offering so many things yes we have that um, we the indians are too much religious in nature i'm talking about indians i'm talking irrespective of all the religious sections and all the religious parameters but that is the problem with us we never ask for sense and that is why often we felt cheated to some extent, not by the ones who love, by the ones who is trying to show that they are serving the God, but they are not. Then there is another poem, The Blue Hearts. In that particular poem, also the poet depicts the kind of society, the culture, the behavior of some people. And here also he shows how the people with the less consciousness and faith in their belief as they they are some kind of hollow human beings. And the priest again uh, wants to take opportunity by telling that the blue color of the painted horse uh, and this kind of blue color is the color that is created by God. So, so many colors, that the, the horse and the color, everything, everything has a story behind it. And Kulatkar is very surprised to see that, that the blind-minded religious pious people admit everything in a very conventional way. They lack the real knowledge and wisdom and realism. And it is the real picture of the society and the poet that says that, that, that this kind of blue horse that, that one day uh, it sang a beautiful song also and now the picture in it and um, look at the blue color, it is painted by the god. So this society that is to some extent, um, this society, what I think that it consists of two types of people. One is full of religious bent of mind, uh, as they always worship deity, blindly believe to the words of the priest and, and believe in what they say. And there is another group of people who are full of logical bent of mind. And they are the modern skeptic people and who want to find truth and realism behind everything. So, um, and um, so the very poem Makarant and that I have probably discussed that the poet lighting a cigarette is trying to show that how much modern he is and at the same time he is not um, pulling off his shoes and he is not there um, to go to offer puja. He is trying to see the customs, the manners of that particular place. So, what we, we learn from society and from our surroundings. More clearly, uh, we learn from the parents as, uh, as we follow. And to some extent, what the few people uh, here, they're also working on, on religion, I know. And they can tell me that this kind of religion and this kind of ethics certainly create some kind of ontological security among us. So this is the very case with Jejudi also. So if the parents are leading, um, immoral life then uh, it is thought to, um, that the child to be lead a moral life and then this picture is portrayed in the prison the prison is a young boy and he uh, and he watches um, his father telling lies to the uh, uh, pilgrims and that is why he is also doing the same thing he is only following his his father's path so this is the problem this is the problem with us this is the problem with that kind of society in jeju as a social poet Kulatkar also shows that the women and their position in the society. In the particular poem, women, in that same volume, he compares women with some kind of sewing machine. 
cat and lizard and um, he shows the domestic life where they are marginalized and subdued their women has to struggle to achieve freedom and now in the society we, uh, women positions is changing they are not the object of expert uh, exploitation subjugation and sexual desire but they are not taking control of a patriarchal society to some extent but at the same time it is often said that the contemporary society pays more attention to idol watch and that is why in that particular uh, a temple in the particular place there are so many male gods are there not not too many female gods are there because to show the patriarchal outset of the society and it is at the same time it's also shown that the this society um, doesn't like um, uh, to think too much because uh, it somehow believe in a, some kind of idol worship and people engage in the thought of the hero but uh, that the image is somehow broken in the suicide of ram because in the particular poem what is shown that the death of an extraordinary man rather hero is in a very very ordinary way and the theme of the poem is about death and darkness so you know this is the problem with us we can't think about the death of certain uh, people or um, certain god like figure like ram and the suicide of ram it's not at all possible because we in the society we have created hero if we go through the works i can say that those, those pal fiction of amish like um, the the shiva trilogy where where he has shown that how shiva lord shiva is the, uh, how he became the god he is a mortal being he, be, he became the god if we if you come across those um, movies like mortals or the land of god or the god of words there you can see also that there are so many heroic figures they because they did so many good jobs so many good novel deeds they become god and they went to heaven so this is the concept and this is the journey of the hero in this context uh, i can tell you that you can go through joseph campbell um, and his um, Mm-hmm. um uh, concept of hero in this um uh, in particular in, in his a thousand faces there he has come across the journey of the hero and to some extent he joined it to the jungian psychology of conscious unconscious and the dream where the hero ultimately um uh, uh, meets um, a saint person who is trying to give him a path a path from ignorance to knowledge so so the journey of the hero must be a significant one and the hero is making suicide it's not at all they, they are thinking so much that how can a hero like it see the concept of sushant singh rajput we are all thinking why he has committed suicide oh no sushant singh can't it's not at all possible to commit suicide so many farmers are committing suicide man we are not asking about this he is also a male they are also committing suicide are we asking no because that's the hero image We have been arguing that the hero, he is the hero. He can't commit suicide. That's the problem with us. So, to us. So that is why the poet is telling that in that particular poem, suicide of Rama, that it's a kind of myth. It's a kind of myth that we have created. Uh, Rama is a kind of unfortunate hero, and the poem is some kind of criticism um, over the contemporary society. And the deep reading of the poem can question about immortality, secularism, and the concept of Rama. Right? To some extent. and there is another poem that is the railway station uh, not that between between jejuria and, and railway station it's about the about the railway station where um, the poet shows that uh, he is um, that the railway station having a six sections with six different um, separate title by far the, to some extent the best poem in the sequence because the railway station is just another meaningless temple and the station master is the two headed god who inhabits the place it's a kind of thing so in this poem to some extent the poet shows the railway time table as station as but the indicator that doesn't work and the only go uh, dog is there that that is uh, active and it has the capacity to recognize the original people and the novice boys um, careless activity in the tea stall the insignificant activities of the railway cooking clerk and the two headed st- station master and lastly that time is determined by seeing and setting the sun so it is the thing that um, th- that the uh, six different attitudes of the society that is trying to say and he to some extent he says that the god and dogs there is nothing to di- different see see the problem See, see the proliferation of language. D O G dog, just alter it. G O D god. 
He has tried to show this much alternative lexical meaning to some extent. And so very true picture of the society and, and of its people are shown here through the six sections in the poem. Then there is another poem that is Yashvant Rao. Mm, here also he shows some kind of typical attitude of common people in the society. Uh, it is such a commercial society that always pays a kind of homage, tribute and attention and, and importance to those gods who can do upheaval tasks. Yashvant Rao, that particular god, is the second class god. See, there are some of the gods in the temple. There is a low, lower class god and upper class god. Don't you think that we are the lower class or we only do the distinction between lower class people and, and upper class people? In temples also, there are lower class gods. There are the gods for the handicapped people. There are the gods for the poor farmers. There are the gods for the Ambani ones. See, it's something like that. So Yashvant Rao is the second class god who and who belongs to the society uh, because he is a kind of go god who has no hands, no feet, no head. So that is why he realizes the pain without this and that is why he restores others limb. That it means that he is a god for the disabled person. Any disabled person, if he can watch the puja, he, if he can or she can offer money, maybe his limbs can be restored. See the irony of the situation. So the poem shows the social picture of the society and the social picture of the gods also. So, so I can say that the, that the Kolarkal is really a social poem to some extent. And this rational thinking of mind is, and his poems of sociological aspect and often his poems are telling the commentary of society, what he sees in the society is shown in his poems, some of his po um, issues like women, religion, worship and other primal issues of the society are shown in the poems with a view of multidimensionality in true terms. And the constructive reading of certain of his poems certainly can show that uh, that he is not actually portrays the society, but he wants to um, decenter the ongoing ontological, socio-cultural, and, and socio-religious uh, activities. And it is about the cultural and social dislocations. And his poems exactly show this. And in doing so, he is really not only observing postmodernism, but he is trying to explore that that certain kinds of nuances that is very much there. So whenever he's trying that uh, his event to some extent there's a kind of singing music musical um, in a very skeptic manner also the poet says that the, that the singer of the haim in the place of god kando is a toothless woman for whose the throat was the haim issues with some difficulty as if he has nothing done with his throat um just uh, something made uh, wrong wrong gone um go wrong with some kind of electric wire and may cause a fuse with the result of that uh, some kind of electric um, appliance in the house uh, cease to function so so the poet is telling that everything is there that is going on it is useless it is uh, and uh, it is futile and then there is another poem that is a song for a murli uh, says the daughter of god also yeah, and it is uh, some kind of traditional poem that murli is the daughter of god khandova and the devotees who are childless they vow to that uh, god khandova in order to get child and they offer uh, god khandova the first child uh, even they get girl so the so she becomes murli or devdasi in the uh, in her womanhood i'm not um, i'm not trying to talk about the nuance of the concept of Devdashi because it is very much problematic in this context how Devdashi are created, how they are exploited. So um, this kind of uh, Murli she dances and, and entertains in front of God Khandova. Then there is another uh, poem that, that name is A Low Temple. It is another a, a, a kind of traditional poem uh, uh, and um, it um, points out that the, that the pilgrim to some extent is a modern intellectual skeptic and the priest is the traditional believer in the religion. In the poem is somehow a bit conversational because the conversion between the priest and the pilgrim and the tone throughout the poem was ironic, which highlighting that the god and the um, the priest to, uh, priest fails to, um, to 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 answer the question of the rational, logical um, bent of mind of that particular um, pilgrim who wants to offer. So, so many things are there, and in the particular poem. Um, there is a uh, that in the last line to some extent um, can say that there is a uh, the portion where they they are saying that uh, you you came out um, in the sun and light a charminar children play on the back and twenty foot um, tortoise so the last line describing the children at play is a kind of incidental to some extent and and it 
it somehow contains a viral bit of information and outside the temple is the sta uh, statue of a tortoise it's a kind of 20 feet long and the children climb up to the top of the statue to play on the back of the tortoise there must be some holy belief relating to the statue also and the children who who, who uh, will be on the back of the tortoise they, they will be extremely intake uh, extremely intellectual so this kind of beliefs are there throughout the whole place so to some extent actually jejuri is about some kind of some kind of emotional aesthetic linguist and cultural and religious failure to some extent before the poet and the poet tries to grip uh, with characteristically the orthodox in indian situation it's a casual westernized tourist visit to a wrong place it seems like that and kolakkar beautifully blends blends the theme of the morality and god and it seems that he is asked by an interviewer why that he believes in um, in god and to some extent kolakkar answered that i leave the question alone i think i have to take a position about god one way or the other i have to be the god to answer whether i believe my own children or my own cousin or not so it is a kind of evidence that jejuri is a kind of waste poem the whole volume without evincing any kind of judgment and it, and it is the poem for uh, whether cross too many things and um, from um, i am trying to end my today's talk by telling that the whole discussion to devote it did uh, to some extent you guys uh somehow made it clear that the poet's motive to visit jejuri is actually to know what jejuri is all about and what is the truth behind this kind of rituals here it takes every stone culture tradition under his investigation to seek the actual story behind this but it is also true that the dilapidation condition that have entered in the tradition and rituals and this led to a man to approach modern view to judge and it gives birth to some kind of post modern attitude it can also be noted that materialism commercialism artificiality hypocrisy and blind faith are the causes for this kind of deterioration of tradition and the rise of skepticism and quest and only by spending a life in a very simple natural way we one can we can solve all this problem so jejuri is not only a collection of a poems where one can find the poet's dilemma or oscillation towards religion and rituals but at the same time it is a poem about the quest in this modern world to attain the actual truth and through perception become the part and parcel of the modern life and jejuri somehow makes us to believe that yes before we need to believe certain things we need to ask ourselves we need to think we need to cogitate and we need to think rationally and for all of this we need to start practicing the habit of thinking it means bhabte hobe jeta bhabbo she bhavna ta ko amader kintu practice er moddhe anta hobe it it is something like that um, when um, um, actor i right now i can't remember his name uh, when he is asked um, that uh, oh he is pankaj tripathi um, that uh, how can you act in this very beautiful way in a very lucid way it's a, it, it means that you are not acting at all then pankaj tripathi told that yes i have practiced this kind of habit of acting in this normal way it means ami je obhinoy ta korchi ami dhore nilam shobai ekhane bangali e ache ami je obhinoy ta korchi je ekta normal obhinoy korchi ami je obhinoy ta amar dekhe loke bolbo je ba ki sundor fluently acting korche bojha jacche na acting korche otao amake rokto korte hoyeche ota otai amar acting so ei so this poem this is the whole section it caters to so many things and first and foremost it be, it gives the birth it gives the birth of the whole new genre it means the death of that particular place and birth of the reader birth of the poet before us that's all thank you so much sir for such an enriching lecture seriously today we went through the journey of how 
Jejudi described the social and cultural mood of society. Rather, it was a quest of the modern world. Thank you so much. And uh, participants, we are ready to take questions. Uh, I think we already have a question in our chat box. I will read it to you, sir. Protim, uh, Protim Dash, who is also a founder member, he asks, thank you, sir, for such an illuminating presentation. I have one question to ask you, sir. Do you think Kulatkar in Jejuri brings an urban sense of irony to his response to the Shreem at to its religious culture, from which his social location uh, location distanced him? What do you think about it? Uh, when he is um, talking about his urban sense of irony, to his response to the um, Shreem as to its religious culture, uh, from which his social location distanced him, what he is trying to say is that he, being a Hindu, being a very much Hindu and being a believer in God, he tries to ask questions, not the, not the gods, but he tries to ask questions those who are supposed to be called the servers of God. That's my point. When he is trying to create that kind of urban sense of irony, this urban sense of irony is associated uh, to the re religious pattern, not about the God. And that is why his social location is not allowing him to distance himself because he is telling that I don't know whether I believe in God or not. But what I believe that if I need to believe or disbelieve in God, I need to be a God at first. Because only then he or she will be able to understand the very basic nature of the priest. Why the priest is doing like that? Only for some money or there is any other ulterior motive. And at the same time, while he is asking all these questions, this kind of urban sense of irony is there, this kind of playfulness to some extent this kind of dark humor is there only to make people only to make us aware about certain illogical irrational religious activities that are prevalent in the society so we need to ask ourselves whether uh, we are trying to ask and to some extent when we are trying to ask this kind of person often you will be socially excluded to some extent but this kind of social Distancing in on part of that religious context cannot be the ultimate solution, or cannot be the um, cannot be created as some kind of hindrance. Because we need to ask, and we need to ask the rationality or the logicality behind this kind of attitude of, of some of certain priests, certain gurus, or sa, certain um, son of the priest, or the certain story behind it. So to some extent, at the same time, while we are there to offer our puja, at the same time, we need to be a bit skeptic. We need to be a bit modern. Whatever they are telling, there is no reason to believe on those. And that is why we need to keep our eyes and ears open whenever we are going through a kind of uh, pilgrimage or kind of journey where there is a chance of befooling us. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, if our participants want, they can also unmute themselves and ask any question. Uh, Sir, uh, I would like to ask something. Uh, firstly, thank you so much for this luminous talk. Uh, this actually reminded me of a portion uh, from a, uh, from E.M. Foster's A Passage to India, where uh, I can quote like uh, someone uh, the, the, uh, who are the, like, the followers of a Saint Tukaram. They are like, uh, uh, like offering their prayers to Tukaram. I'm quoting Tukaram Tukaram, thou art my father and mother and everybody. They sang not even to the God who confronted them, but to a saint. Where was the God himself in whose honor the congregation had gathered? Indistinguishable in the jumble of his own altar, huddled out of sight and amid images of inferior descents and others. So can you sir relate this? Look, there is a altogether, uh, to some extent, uh, somehow 
if uh, you are trying to relate the context of a novel within a poem somehow it it seems to be a bit problematic but yes to some extent i am telling you two examples in this context if you have gone through the poem of lizzie musical and particularly night of the scorpion there also you will come across one particular fact that that mother was stung by a scorpion and she was there suffering for 22 hours almost and all the other villagers they are there they are, they are uttering some kind of nonsense things and um, uh, her husband is there also trying to tell that what should in spite of doing some kind of proper medical treatment they are only uttering they are praying before the god and the mother is telling that yes i got stung it means my children will be saved god has saved my children god has given me the punishment by that scorpion so the, so think how we are trying to make a certain kind of image of god within our mind at the same time let me tell you another prime example uh, when you are telling about the cons of Tukaram, if you can come across the um, novel of R. Rajarao, there is a certain thing, in, and particularly in the novel, the serpent and the rope, there this concept is utterly exploited. It means this kind of rope, and we are here, this rope is a kind of symbol about a point of belief and a point of disbelief and we have to move in a very careful way on the rope or through the rope and the serpent the serpent is a, some kind of illusionary thing the serpent and rope uh, also remind me of that uh, play where we need to go through the ladder and a, and a serpent um, kills us and then we also we need to begin from that again from a very particular point or from a very vantage point or from a very this serpent is a kind of religion, religion to all the people, irrespective of their ethnicity, to be careful about the venomousity of this kind of serpent. We need to know that how we can be beaten at the same time, how we can be saved. So it depends on us whether we will tame that serpent or whether we will be tamed by that serpent it it's about a play about a play about how we are trying to tackle certain ontological religious belief among us and that is why so many things are there so many so many ethnicities so so many so many traumatic events to some extent, they are associated with the con very concept of religion because the very concept of religion are not same to every people. Different people have the different sets of religions. Some people think that in a very positive way. Some people think that in a very negative way. Some people use that to manipulate other people. So the very dynamics or the very problematic part of religion is a kind of serpent and the whole serpent and the and the whole play is about balancing how you are trying to balance it's something like that. thank you sir thank you so much thank you so much sir we have another question in our chat box it is from Pritikona Kormuka. she is an she is a phd scholar in IIT Roorkee. she says thank you so much for this illuminating presentation i have a question could you please elaborate on the idea of the lower class gods in today's notions of divinity, especially when we consider the idea of the Kalikas and the worship of the deities of the lower class gods shown in the Manasamangal Kavya of Bengal. Uh, if you, you would like to say something about this, sir. Look, we are, thanks for this wonderful question, we are living in such a society where there are so many stories, stories within stories. We are now living. And that is why we have now created gods, regional gods. And this kind of regional gods have their own kind of regional ethics and their own kind of 
regional morality and that is why this kind of why i am telling that the lower class people and the lower class god when this kind of regional gods are there for example i teach in a college in purulia in purulia a particular i teach where that place that place is named boravajar there are too many gods are there two three or four type of gods are there and in every month they were worshiped they are worshiped by a very particular people particular community of people not every people are, are allowed to worship that particular god so it means this kind of divided things we have created i am not supposed if if i want to worship that particular god i won't be able to do that because i don't believe i don't belong to that particular community only that particular community can um, offer the prayers to that particular kind of god so this, this is the problem we are creating this kind of lower uh, lower class gods and lower class people is also there this is the problem that and with upper class people let me tell you um, in the and the date is uh, where the worship of the deities and particularly in the context while they are trying to offer their prayers so many gods so many gods are there they are the male gods female gods even i have come across transgender gods even in that particular place that the gods with, with transgender identity so so and th that particular god is worshiped by transgender people so this is so how to some extent we have catered to that particular community and why because those people are not allowed to worship other gods so they have created their own idol and they are worshiping their particular god in the particular context so this is how the whole nation is divided into regional gods and every regional gods have their sub gods it's a kind of a thing um, that uh, everything is connected to everything else um, so uh, this kind of everything is connected to everything else also reminds me of bruno latour's um, act network theory when he's um, trying to tell that in this world of timothy morton's concept of post nature and i'm not trying to go there it, it means to simply if i tell you um, that this kind of creation of lower class god or the upper class god are to some extent are the creation to assert our identity to assert our supremacy to assert our capitalistic outlook and whether it is in manusha mangal or it is in in other context of other bengali text or in if we can come across so many other brota kathas there are also so many female gods are there in brota kathas there are not so male gods are there also so there are so many nuances mm -hmm. history among this and in every and and if we come across shiv puran or vishnu puran in every puran in shiv puran shiv is the most powerful god in vishnu puran vishnu is the most powerful god so what we have created this kind of ontological stories about the god that i can say thank you so much sir uh, do you have any questions uh, dear participants you can unmute yourselves and ask questions directly to sir uh, look jemima some of the participants are so upset they are telling that uh, that you are not providing any certificate what can we do <laughs> we are not providing any certificate uh, we are so sorry about this and uh, thank you sir thank you for your precious time it was really wonderful having you with us and nothing could have been much better than on a sunday evening thank you so much uh, thank you so much dear participants for joining us today we have our next lecture on 30th september good night everyone thank you